How are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another reviewing video, and a perfect time to review this one. Only what? Well, technically the racing season begins on Sunday, but uh, NASCAR Full Speed is out on Netflix. <clears throat> oh my god, my throat. But essentially, what this documentary is, is essentially there's nine different drivers that they look over, and they essentially follow their journey through the playoffs. So I'm going to talk about each episode uh, and give you my little bits of detail of like where I thought they did really well, where I thought they could improve, and the parts that I didn't like. Spoiler alert, there's not a part, there's not many parts that I didn't like, but I will say, um, if you haven't watched the series yet, please go and watch it before you watch this video because there's going to be a lot, and I mean a lot, of spoilers in this video, so just heads up if you haven't watched have you haven't watched the series yet go watch it uh, I'll probably put the link to it in the description if you have a Netflix account just log in or go subscribe whatever you need to do and watch this series enough talk let's get into this well let's start off with episode one episode one is all about Daytona the summer race the regular season finale at well, Daytona, obviously, I just said, but it's essentially explaining how the playoffs work and what situation everybody is in. We get some insight into the life of Denny Hamlin. There's a li there's some bits and pieces on William Byron there as well. Those are the, I mean, first things first. Denny Hamlin is the star of this show. I am going to say that right off the bat. If you don't like Denny Hamlin, you're probably gonna like him a bit more after you watch this video or watch this series rather I should say but I mean people ask me all the time what I think of Denny Hamlin and I think he is the best anti-hero NASCAR, NASCAR could ever ask for I'm getting a little off topic here but Denny Hamlin is so good for this sport he's so good for this sport and having him be the main guy in a show like this He's so good for the sport. And then I can't, I can't wait for next year when Chase Elliott's in this. Chances are. I swear to God, if Chase Elliott misses the playoffs for back-to-back -back years and he's not in this Netflix documentary, I am gonna just... <laughs> but anyways. Uh, <clears throat> when it comes to Denny, um, they got a lot of insight into Denny over the next episode, so I'm not gonna speak too much on Denny, but... I'll, I think too many people take Denny at face value. I really do. Because if you actually, you look at Denny, you look how hard he works, and I mean, you see, and I mean, I come from fighting. Because I'm able, so I'm able to see things a little bit more than face value. Like, I can see the act that someone's trying to put on to sell a show and all that. And I think Denny Hamlin is He's doing such a good job for the sport, but people don't give him enough credit. They really don't. And I think this this show is going to give Denny Hamlin a lot more credit than people deserve. Hell, I was watching this show with my mom, and she was becoming a Denny Hamlin fan. And my mom watches essentially every ra race with me. Just giving you a heads up on Denny Hamlin, man. Just, if you if you bring a new fan into the sport, they might... If are a new fan to watch this, they might just become a Denny Hamlin fan, but still. Uh, enough about Denny Hamlin. Uh, they essentially talk about his owner, like his dynamics heading into Daytona, because two, two of his main, if we remember correctly, two of his main guys are going to be racing against each other for that last playoff spot, because there's Double Wallace in the 23, and for 2311 racing the team that he owns and ty gibbs in the 54 the grandson of the owner of his car joe gibbs who and if you're just a casual nfl fan you might know that name because uh super bowl with the washington commanders moved south bought a race team hall of fame nfl coach that joe gibbs but uh yeah so if we're looking at this this episode respectively I mean, I think they did a really good job at it personally because they didn't like how I over hyperize on the fact that um, that priest had that wreck and God, like I just think they did a really good job not over dramatizing it. Like 
F1 does with just oh if one car goes 15 uh, millimeters off of track limits then oh my god is he gonna get a penalty it cuts the whole garage like <laughs> I mean I like F1 but like NASCAR is my bread and butter it re it truly is if you told me if I had to pick one sport to watch for the rest of my life I would pick NASCAR in a heartbeat I really would NASCAR has been my sport since I was taller than well, I wasn't even as tall as this desk I've been, I'm recording this video with, and now my knee comes up to it sitting down. So, <laughs> tell me what you will. But, yeah, no, I thought this episode was good. I mean, in the future, I'd like to see them focus a little bit more on the regular season. But then again, the regular season doesn't mean a whole hell of a lot with the playoffs these days, so I can understand why they just did the playoffs. But, imagine if they did the regular season. Daytona 500, Ricky Stenhouse winning, uh, Kansas, that battle between Hamlin and Larson, Pocono, Hamlin and Larson, uh, Chicago, Shane Van Gisbergen, like, it's crazy to think all the storylines that could have been made just out of the regular season, you could have, you could have had a whole nother series just for the regular season, but just some advice to move, for, look for in the future, but overall, good episode, good building block, and now it's time to explain episode two and the start of the playoffs. I should mention, <clears throat> episode one is titled Playoffs or Bust, and episode two is titled Another Year, so finding another year in the playoffs, and that's exactly where this leads to. The round of 16 <clears throat> is here. Uh, so we talk about another year, uh, players begin, or drivers begin the playoffs with Darlington, Kansas, <clears throat> and Bristol. Those are the three races of the round of 16, if you didn't know. So, um, it talks a bit, I mean, we're following Denny Hamlin around a fair bit in this episode as well. I mean, you pretty much get at least five minutes of Denny <laughs> in every episode, because, I mean, he doesn't get a lot in the finale, obviously, he wasn't in the championship for, spoiler alert, oh my god, but, um, yeah, you're, you're always getting a bit of Denny in these episodes, I, in this episode, I remember seeing a lot of Joey Logano, uh, it was a lot of Joey and Bubba, I remember that, because Joey ended up missing this round, and I mean, what, I mean, with Joey, I mean, I would have liked to see them put uh, put more into Joey. I really would have, but oh well. I mean, it's cool to see. For me personally, it's really cool to see these shots where they're like in the holler or whatever. Because this is what I don't see. I see everything else, but like there's these cool like shots where Joey Logano's sitting in the holler. He's like, "Well, I'm out of the playoffs unless someone wrecks," and then it and it's Martin Truex Jr. spinning on his TV behind him. He goes, oh, here's my chance and all this stuff. Like, that's the cool in-depth stuff I really enjoyed out of this series. It's the stuff I haven't seen before, and it's it's up close and it's personal. I uh, will talk about this later and at, like, the final part of the video, but I think Another Gear is another very good episode. You know, I just... I really like these after... How do I explain it? These, like, after the race shots where, like, someone's out or whatever, or they're in the hauler, or they're in victory lane, or they're RV, or whatever. Uh, and even in the house, those are the those are the shots I really like. But, I mean, uh, it was cool to see Bubba get to the next round in this episode because they showed a lot of Bubba. And, I mean, they showed a bit about how Denny struggled in the first two races uh, of the playoffs in this round and then in Bristol he got his win and then the infamous I beat your favorite driver and who would that be all of them <laughs> oh my but anyways uh, another gear start of the playoffs round of 16 essentially episodes 3 4 and 5 are round of 12 round of 8 and championship 4 pretty much but yeah I think this is a good insight into this one. I mean, they do, a, I should have said this earlier, but they do a bit on Reddick as well, where he won Kansas too. And it's, it's really funny how it works, because, like, Reddick obviously beat Denny for that Kansas win, and they were going back and forth the whole day after Larson and Bubba really ruined their days at Kansas. And 
it's just cool to see those little insights of, yeah, I'm happy for, for my, Denny being like, I'm happy for my driver, but F him at the same time, you know what I mean? It's, it's cool to see those little tiny insights like that. It's really cool to see those, but yeah, man, that was episode two. On to episode three. <laughs> Side note, Tyler Reddick's got to find a way to get his cat off the, off the screen sometimes. Episode three, one last push. This is essentially talking about the round of 12. We have, uh, what was the first race of round of 12? Texas. And this is where we get into a bit of Bubba Wallace and how he, but really Texas was his race, but he kind of lost it. But then, uh, we, we talk about Talladega and that's where we learn a lot about Ryan Blaney and the insides of his life after when he got his Talladega win. And we also talk a bit about Ross Chastain. Uh, I'm <sighs> Ross the boss at the Roval because I mean, obviously Ross Chastain got knocked out at the Roval. Bubba Wallace got knocked out at the Roval as well. So we get to, get to see a little bit of insight on Bubba Wallace as well. And side note, I never knew Booty Barker was in a wheelchair like until this series. Like that doesn't get enough credit. Like that really doesn't. But um, yeah, no, I thought this another really solid episode because I mean you get to see the emotional highs and lows of the 2311 team at Texas and I mean there wasn't much of Denny this episode to be honest there wasn't a whole lot of Denny but uh yeah they actually got a little like this episode Dale Jr. got some shine too in the commentators booth it's really cool to see the angles of like they're like behind the commentators as they're commentating the race and as like the big one and stuff happens. They also talk about Ross and his wreck at Talladega and how that really set them back going into the Roval and all this stuff. You get a little bit of Reddick too because Reddick was actually below the cut line heading into the Roval and then he won the first stage so life was good, life was handy dandy and yeah man, it was, honestly it was a really good episode. I really do, I really did enjoy this one. Wait, yes, this is also the, yes, there's also insight in the Hendrick Motorsports in this one because William Byron uh, won Rick Hendrick's race, Rick Hen Hendrick Motorsports 300th win in this episode. And so there's like a big team party at Hendrick Motorsports, they, they interview, uh, they didn't, t uh, well, there's like a point where they're on stage where it's like Larson, uh, Byron, Chase, and Bowman, they didn't include any of the parts where they asked Chase and Bowman any questions, but uh, they like there's a part where I remember they asked Kyle Larson something about how he would race Denny Hamlin from going forward and all this stuff, and Kyle Larson goes, Jeff, what would, because Jeff Gordon's doing the questions, he's like, Jeff, what would you do? And Jeff Gordon's like, I'd put that son of a bitch in the wall. <laughs> I, I just found, uh, just a side note, but I found that really funny. That might have been an episode two, actually, but oh well. Well, at least that part of it. I remember the little party and uh, rock, uh, friggin' William Byron's mom spilling, like, what was it, like, fruit juice on the car or something like that. It's just these little funny things like that. Like, I mean, it's not every day you get to go inside Hendrick Motorsports' 300th win party, you know what I mean? So, I, I mean, Chad Knauss got a little bit of shine, but... Uh, Ross Chastain and Ryan Blaney, it, it, those were the two vocal points of this episode, in my opinion, because you didn't see much of Blaney before this, but then you get an insight to his personal life and who who his girlfriend Gianna is, I believe. Is her name Gianna? I know it starts with a G. She's like Miss Hooters or something like that. But, um, yeah, and there's like a little bit of Ross, and they're explaining how he's a watermelon farmer. There's this one point where they document him swimming and how he's taking better care of his health to try and be a better racer. He's there, like, hitting this little light switch thing, testing his reaction speed, and there's a part where he's calling out Larson in the sauna to put some clothes on. I found I just found that kind of funny, especially after Darling, the spring Darlington race, but... Yeah, overall, really good episode. Or, the building blocks are there, but let's get into episode four, not the plan, call in the round of eight. Episode four, not the plan. This is where we get to meet more of number 20, Christopher Bell. I, there, I will say, this is one, there's this one really cool scene uh, 
where they where it's, it's before the Vegas race and they go to and they get they finally get Christopher Bell on the screen. They ask him is like uh, before the producer says something like before the series we're asked to uh, like pre-plan any certain like or we're asked to like pick the certain drivers who we think will have a decent shot of going to the end. And like NASCAR gave their list and Netflix gave their list or whatever. Christopher Bell was on neither of them. Christopher Bell. Side note, again, but Christopher B Bell is by far the most underrated driver in the garage. By far. All the drivers know it. Kyle Larson said Christopher Bell is better than him. So why is this kid not getting shine? I know he's not a big mouth, I know he's not a big talker, but like, this dude is arguably the fastest driver on the track. Every single week. And I mean, I know he's, like this season, it wasn't his greatest, but he still got to the championship four. And he was running pretty well until he had that brake failure. Like, Christopher Bell is the real deal, man. I don't get why people sleep on Christopher Bell. I had him in my championship four in 2022 and in 2023. Christopher Bell is that guy, man. Side tangent, but oh well. I just don't get why people sleep on Christopher Bell. It drives me insane. But, um, yeah, so it talks about Las Vegas, and I mean, it's really, they essentially hype it up to be Larson versus Bell because you get a bit of insight into Larson's life and you get an insight into uh, Christopher Bell's life because there's this point where Christopher Bell, uh, him and his wife are going to the NASCAR Hall of Fame and for some reason Christopher Bell has a weird obsession with grass. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, for context, he's just really trying to like make a great lawn and he's jealous of his neighbors or whatever and they're driving to the NASCAR Hall of Fame and him and his wife are picking kids to do like a pit crew challenge with or whatever it's it's pretty cool and then there's like points where they're talking about Larson and him and his wife Caitlin and how apparently Caitlin likes to eat cow balls I think that's in the last episode <laughs> at least that part of it but yeah no uh, I remember they asked Larson they're like yeah, when did you know Christopher was going to be the car to beat on, and Larson just goes on lap one? <laughs> oh my, I just, I love the little bits and pieces of this show. But, yeah, Larson wins Las Vegas, he's locked in the championship four. We go to Miami, and this is where you get to see a little bit more of Seabell, as, you know, he went and won Miami, but you also get to see little bits and pieces of Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, and William Byron, as they were all fighting for the spots behind Christopher Bell late in the race, and then Denny went, Pow! and had that brake failure, and so Denny is forced to fight from behind at Martinsville next week, Ryan Blaney comes home second, William Byron comes home third or fourth, I believe, and Christopher Bell wins at the Homestead Miami Speedway, locking himself into the championship four. And you get to see the inside scoop around Bell's win, uh, Bl the Blaney versus Hamlin beef that's gonna head into Martinsville next week. And that's where we head to Martinsville, where uh, actually in between the whole Martinsville, uh, Blaney, Hamlin, and Martinsville thing, there's a little bit I really enjoyed about William Byron uh, that like he as soon as he got he gets home from races he gets in front of his couch and watches the race immediately uh, just so he remembers how he felt during these moments and if how he felt was if he can judge how he felt was valid or not which I felt was really interesting personally but anyways heading to the last race at Martinsville you have it was it was really hyped up to be Blaney versus Hamlin it was really hyped up to be that. And William Byron's kind of in the mix, but you just kind of figure that he's so good on points that he's going to make it anyway. And then they're really hyping up that Byron's having a bad day. His car's as hot as a furnace. And Blaney, well, Hamlin has the lead for majority of the race. Then comes Ryan Blaney, and he passes Hamlin on the outside, which is an absolute kick in the dick in the words of Hamlin, getting passed on the outside at Martinsville. But, uh... Let's just say Blaney has the lead now. Hamlin's doing everything he can to get it back. It's not enough. Ryan Blaney wins Martinsville. He's in the championship four. And William Byron finishes, I think it was eight points to the good of Denny Hamlin. Yeah, so that's how it's set. 
that's how you get your championship for Larson, Bell, Blaney, and Byron, your championship for heading to Phoenix Raceway. And uh, there's some, like, honestly, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I almost cried over Denny Hamlin at the end of episode four. I can't even believe I'm saying it. I almost cried watching Denny Hamlin. There's a really emotional moment where he's just, like, getting a hug from his crew chief or whatever. And, um, yeah, no, and his kids and his, his girlfriend are just there uh, condoling him and all this stuff. And Denny's talking about, he's almost in tears talking about how they're old enough to understand why dad's having a bad day and all this stuff. And you're just like, man, that's sad. Like, that's actually really sad. <laughs> oh, yeah. My computer shut off. I have like all the episodes in front of me. My computer shut down because I'm yapping so much. But overall, really good episode. I think in terms of detail and like getting the inside scoop, that might have been the best one. Until I watched episode five, Across the Line. So episode five is titled Across the Line. This is essentially uh, how like you get to see how each finalist is preparing for their championship four race they have the inside scoop on each championship four driver uh it starts off a little bit of like kyle larson and how his wife has the farm oh yeah this is when they're talking about the whole cow balls thing and then it has a little bit of ryan blaney in there it has a little bit of christopher bell has a bit of william byron william byron's building is well ryan blaney's sister is william byron's girlfriend for those who didn't know and um She's got him building Lego sets to get his mind off of racing, but he's also built like the damn Titanic and built about 50 cars out of Lego and stuff. But And then it shows you a little bit of media day and how each guy's kind of take like little friendly jabs at one another just to give a laugh for the crowd and all this stuff. Side note, I just thought of this as I'm talking about this, but there's a really funny moment where uh, that Daytona, they have Denny Hamlin up here for a guest appearance, and there's like these three people in Denny Hamlin gear yelling and screaming, and they're like, yeah, Denny, your favorite, your your number one fans are here, and Denny goes, yeah, my, uh, oh, I thought my number one fan was the guy in the back with the Denny Hamlin sucks t-shirt. <laughs> I just found that bit really funny, but anyways, um, yeah, across the line, championship four we're into phoenix raceway and it starts out with byron leading the race and then they they dive in and out of christopher bell and at the beginning of the race and um yeah no with bell uh they dive in and out they go back to blaney and how he struggled with his car after the first pit stop blaney's feeling so much better he's got a good run and then they cut back to christopher bell and there goes bell's brakes He's going, he's out of the race, and they they show his car going to the garage, and he's going into his motor home, and he's crying there with his wife, and yeah, oh, you really felt bad for him. You really, you really did feel bad for C. Bell in that moment, but his, I think his wife took it harder than he did, personally. But shout out to Morgan Bell, man. She, she seems like an absolutely lovely lady, but uh, yeah, back to the race. It really focuses on Ryan Blaney from this point. Obviously, he's the champion, if you didn't know. Uh, he comes in, swoops through, uh, takes the lead, and they have to explain to the people that it's not just those four cars on the track. There's other, there's other cars still trying to win the race, and unfortunately for those guys, the guy with the best car is Ross Chastain, and Ross Chastain is not going to let you buy very easily. And that's something you'll figure out very quickly when you watch this show. But um, Ross. Uh, yeah, so Ross and Blaney are having their battle for the lead. They show the parts where Blaney's flipping them off in the car. <laughs> oh, it's just so funny to talk about. And then the caution for Kyle Busch comes out with 37 to go. This is where they start to show a bit more of Larson in this championship battle because they're talking about how Larson needs a good pit stop and, uh... They provided it for him. Larson got a good pit stop. He's first out of the pits. There's two drivers that didn't pit ahead of him, and Denny and Eric Jones. But 
Yeah, so, and then it comes down to really, uh, Byron's crew, they have a little bit of Byron's crew chief hyping them up, Rudy Fugel, shout out to Rudy, Rudy Fugel, and, um, and then they cut to Blaney, really, how he passes Byron, he passes Truex, and then all he's, or whoever it was, he passes Byron, he pa and then they really focus on the battle of Blaney and Larson. They show Larson getting almost like sideways at this point. He was driving like this, he was like, whoop, right back to normal. And that's when Blaney pounced. Blaney took the lead, Hunt took down the clear space, and Ryan Blaney is your NASCAR 2023 champion. That's how episode four goes, and I mean, they show a lot of Blaney celebrations, like interviews with Roger Penske, his girlfriend. Uh, oh, they also they also go really in depth on Blaney's like talking about his father, his granddad, his uncle all racing and like how he was winning races when he was like age six and crap like that. So yeah, Re honestly, a lot of really good insight in all these drivers. And then of course, when that's all said and done, they go straight back to Denny Hamlin <laughs> and they go, yeah, not winning a championship is a real kick in the dick. Like I swear I'm cursed or something like that. But overall, that is NASCAR full speed, episode by episode, race by race, and overall, absolutely phenomenal series. Absolutely phenomenal series. I love every second of it but let's get to my overall review. Now, if I'm being 100% honest with my thoughts and my views on this series, this is exactly what I would have wanted from a NASCAR docu-series. It was absolutely perfect from start to finish. You got the drivers finally, and I mean finally got to show off their personalities. This is what we've been waiting for for so goddamn long as NASCAR fans. It felt like the sport was dying when Dale Jr. left in 2018. And it's like, oh my god. The most popular driver is Chase Elliott, and all you see him is go, yeah, I'm happy we won the race. Napa, Mountain Dew. Seriously, <laughs> like, come on. We need better than this. We need better than this. And this is so perfect. This is so perfect. I was watching a video right before I recorded this. Uh, and it was the ice, shout out to the iceberg, by the way, Jarrett Lundberg, who's a big Minnesota Vikings fan. And he referenced the quarterback documentary. And all, and as, and for him as a Vikings fan, um, he said that all he knew Kirk Cousin for was having that terrible contract which is pretty much ruining his team and um, after he watched the documentary he goes wow Kirk Cousins is a really cool guy uh, I want to learn more about Kirk, Kirk Cousins this is after the quarterback documentary I'm sorry if I didn't specify that earlier I can't remember if I did or I didn't but that's what this show really needed and I think they did that to perfection with not just one driver not just two drivers not just three they did that with nine of them. They did that with Denny Hamlin, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, Bubba Wallace, Joey Logano, Ross Chastain. I don't think I said Tyler Reddick, but nine drivers they did that with. Nine of them. It was so, so perfect and so, 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 so needed for the sport. I know they tried this with Race to the Championship last year, but that was really stupid. They only showed it on what? USA Network at like 11 o'clock at night like and I'm in Gannon I can't even watch that like seriously guys like we can do so much better than this so much better and this was it this was well and truly it you guys hit the friggin jackpot with this this was what we needed thank you NASCAR thank you thank you thank you do this again, season after season after season, and your growth will go like this. It really will. Your your friggin' stock charts or whatever are just going to kneel right after this. Great friggin' job, NASCAR. Great job. It's not quite perfect. It's not quite perfect, but easy 9 out of 10 for me. I know I'm probably biased, but my god. I well and truly love this show. The because the, the things that make NASCAR great are the characters. And that's why I've been preaching Denny Hamlin 
all season long this year. Why? Because he's putting himself out there. He's saying stuff on his podcast. He's not afraid to be brash. He's not afraid to be bold. And this is what NASCAR needs. They need their personalities out there. And this is so damn good for that. It's so damn good. I really, really hope this doesn't turn into a drive to survive thing where it comes to, oh, it's just the team owners and the drivers only get like one second of shine because they see it as good marketing. Like NASCAR needs this. NAS, excuse me, NASCAR needs this. This is the golden ticket on how you're going to grow your sport. This right here is your golden ticket, and you gotta goddamn capitalize this. If there's not a season two, I'm going to be pissed. We need this. NASCAR, put it in your brain now. We need more of this. Okay, rant's over. I'm done. <laughs> I have vented enough, but point is, NASCAR needs personalities, and this is how you show those personalities. Once you give, once you make the drivers comfortable enough to show access, they will give you this, and this is what you need, because then the people who, uh, let's say, all of my friends, majority of my friends, just think NASCAR's driving around in circles, and when you show them this, they're gonna think, wow, it's not just drivers going around in circles all day. There's real people in these cars who could die if the wrong thing happens. And another rant too. The, uh, the reason drivers are so uncomfortable, they don't wanna say anything, is because, oh, we might piss a sponsor off. If you say so much and the fans give you so much attention, the people, like, the people are gonna have no ch- or, like, the sponsors, the corporations, they're not gonna give you- give them a choice. They're gonna force to be on- like, they're gonna- you're gonna- the fans are gonna force their hand to put their name on that driver's car when that driver's winning, like, 10 out of 36 races a year, like Kyle Larson did when he came back after saying the N-word. Like, <sighs> Hold it in, Skyler. Hold it in. Okay, I am done. My re that's my review on NASCAR Full Speed. That's your golden ticket. This is a 9 out of 10 series. Do it more. Please, for the love of God. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, my some I'll have some videos coming out about the NASCAR 2024 season coming out soon. I'm starting a new series on Saturday, and I'll probably have my predictions video out probably like the Thursday or Saturday maybe before the 500 so keep an eye out for that and if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash that like button comment share and subscribe notifications turn on so you never miss a future upload and I'll see you for all 2024 man this is gonna be a really good year I've got a lot of good things coming for this NASCAR season so stay tuned but for now guys take care and peace